Gardening can be an expensive hobby, but it doesn't have to be. With the 15 tips I'm giving in this video and a little self-control, you can grow your own food without breaking the bank. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your gardening to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. Now I know I'm not gonna think of every money saving idea there is, 15 is a good amount that I came up with, but if you think of one that I don't cover, please put it in the comments down below so we can all take advantage of it. Now out of these 15, 14 are money saving tips, and the number 15 is going to be, if you're going to invest in one thing, number 15 is gonna be the place that I would do most of my investing, other than quality soil. Put that out there right now. So stick around to the end for number 15, the number one thing you definitely should put your money into. I'm gonna hold you captive till then, or you could just fast forward. So number one, start small and have self-control. I know when you get started, it's very tempting to try and create this big garden if you've got the space, but that's not always a great idea uh, from a beginner standpoint, you might want to learn a little slower, but if, you, if you've done a lot of your research, but you're low on cash, still start small. Setting up new beds, especially soil quality, which we'll talk about in a second, the soil quality is really is vital to your success. And so you don't want to skimp there. However, you don't have to spend a ton of money. We're going to get to that in a second. But start small and then expand as you kind of Get, get some more money and get some more experience. A great way to save money is number two, starting your plants from seed. I can't tell you how much you will save. I went to the garden center the other day and I was looking at, just browsing through the garden area, looking at the transplants. I was looking at tomatoes and uh, peppers, but transplants are ridiculously high, especially right now. Let me know down below if you've noticed an increase in the cost of transplants at the garden center this year. I saw lettuce, lettuce, like a head lettuce, where you could spend $3 on one head of lettuce that still has to grow. You still have to feed it and water it. That's more than I would spend on an organic head of lettuce at the store. So if at all possible, grow from seed. It might cost you a dollar to $3, maybe a little more for some specialty items, but that is nothing when you figure that that pack has probably 25 or more plants possible out of it for a dollar to three dollars. So it just doesn't make sense to buy transplants from the garden center. Plus, as I was browsing the garden center, there's hardly any varieties. I mean, the, 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 the choice that you have is so narrow. When you compare that to a seed catalog where you could have 25 to 30 or more varieties for each thing you wanna grow, just all signs point to starting from seed. And I've got lots of seed starting videos, so you have no problem you know, jumping in that way and knowing everything you need to know. Now, if you wanna save money even further with seeds, my, tip, my third tip would be to go to a seed swap, find a seed library. Um, the library near our old house, there was, it was just a regular library for books. They had a seed library and you could go in and you can see all the different kinds of seeds they had and you could take some, take them home. Now, it's always nice to replenish those. So if you can save some seed and bring them back to the library, that's how they kind of keep it in stock. A seed swap is where gardeners come and they bring their seeds and they swap it with other gardeners. Now, if you don't yet have any seeds because you're new and you don't have seeds to take to a seed swap, I'm gonna bet gardeners are a very giving bunch that they're not gonna have a problem with you not coming with any seeds. If you're new, they're probably still gonna load you up with more seeds than you can use. Tip number four is save your own seeds. That is really easy to do. If it's an heirloom or a uh, open pollinated variety, it is super easy to save seeds. I'm gonna be doing a video on that later in the season when it comes time to save seeds, but you can only save your seeds uh, and have them come true from open pollinated or heirloom. If you get a hybrid, that's not gonna work. You might still get a tomato, 
but it's not going to be the same tomato that you harvested. So for example, Sun Gold is an F1 hybrid, my favorite cherry tomato. You cannot save seeds from Sun Gold. You will get something similar, maybe similar to one of the parents of Sun Gold, but you're not going to get a Sun Gold. For those, you would have to buy new each season. Number five is to take cuttings. Herbs are very easy to propagate through cuttings. Uh, basil, for sure, is really easy. I have a video that I did uh, propagating basil. I'll put that down in the description, a link to that. Um, but all herbs are very easy, or most herbs. Um, tomatoes, you know, I teach you guys to single stem the tomato, which means taking out all the side growth. Don't just throw those away or in the compost. Put them in some water, and in a week or two, uh, you're gonna have roots from those tomatoes forming and in like two or three weeks, you'll be able to put those in the garden, free plants. Number six, and I'm not just saying this to promote my new book, maybe just a little, companion planting. Companion planting is gonna save you money on pest control, disease issues. It's gonna save you money on um, watering. It's gonna save you money on fertilizing, and it's gonna save you money on soil management. There is so much more to companion planting than, you know, just what this plant likes next to this plant. So get my book, learn all of the secrets, and you're going to save money. I promise you. Number seven is to repurpose containers. You don't have to buy new pots all the time. Uh, or if you're getting started, you don't have to buy pots. You can use anything to grow in. I use uh, galvanized wash tubs. Now, I did buy those, but you could find something similar. You can use buckets as long as they're a, a good kind of plastic. So for all plastics, you'll want to look and see this symbol here, and you'll want either a two or a four in that symbol. A five would work too. It's just not quite as good as the two or the four, which means it's food grade. You can find those if you go to your grocery store, go to the deli or the bakery, and sometimes they'll get pickles or frosting or dough brought to the store in those buckets and they're looking to get rid of them. So a lot of times they'll give them to you for free. Make sure there's holes, lots of drainage holes drilled in anything that you use. But I've seen people use a shoe, a bathtub, a toilet outside of the house, not hooked to plumbing. As long as you have well-draining potting soil and good drainage holes, you can use almost anything to grow in. Now I did a video a couple of days ago on um, tips for growing in containers. So I'm gonna link that below too, cause you might wanna use that in growing in any of these repurposed containers. Number eight, similar, raised beds. Raised beds can be very expensive. If you buy pre-made metal raised beds, wood raised beds, um, or even buy the wood. Right now, lumber prices are at an all-time high. So if you buy the wood to make your raised beds, um, that could be pricey. However, there's a lot of times where you can find wood that's been used, it's laying in a heap, um, I repurposed a lot of the wood from the roof that I'm sitting under when I redid it. You can use pallets. Sometimes people are giving pallets away uh, or selling them very cheap. Take them apart, use that wood to make your raised bed. You can also use logs, bricks that you find, rocks. You don't even need an edge on your raised bed. You can actually pile up about six inches of compost, pack it down and grow right into that. That brings us right into number nine, which is no dig gardening. I did my fall garden uh, the same way Charles Dowding does it. He doesn't edge his raised beds. He just piles up the compost. I did the same thing. Just pile it up about six inches, tamp it down, plant directly into it. So you're going to save that way doing no dig gardening. Uh, you do have to have a good quality source of compost, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but also, if you're not digging, then that kind of eliminate some tools that you need. You don't really need a shovel. You definitely don't need a rototiller, which can cost a couple hundred dollars at least. You need some cardboard and some compost. Cardboard's free and compost, which is my number 10 tip. Number 10 is to create your own compost. Now, you might not be able to create the amount of compost that you will need, especially in the beginning, but you're going to save money because homemade compost is so nutrient rich. It's so full of beneficial microbes, bacteria. That's going to go a long way to saving you money on fertilizer. I have a video on composting that'll show you how to set it up, what to put in it. 
Um, my new book also has an entire section on how to set it up, but it's going to save you some money and it's going to give you something that you can't buy. Number 11 is free or cheap compost. If you can't make all the compost you need, then you can get some free or cheap. Check with your city hall or your local recycling center because a lot of times cities have yard waste recycling that they will turn into compost and either give back to the community or sell it back for uh, a reasonable amount. You can also look for a local mushroom, uh, preferably organic mushroom farm, and they're constantly turning over compost and going through compost. So they're gonna be looking to get rid of it. And sometimes you can get it free or very cheap. Number 12 is free fertilizer. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on because I'm gonna dedicate an entire video almost to it this weekend, which is be free or cheap fertilizer, still organic, but you can actually DIY some fertilizer that you can use and it's not gonna cost you anything or next to nothing. So stay tuned for this weekend's video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you're notified when that video comes out. Number 13 has to deal with tools. If you need some tools, but you don't wanna spend a bunch of money, first of all, don't get the ones you see at Dollar Tree or at discount stores. Those are not gonna be quality. They just won't be. And you're gonna be wasting your money anyway because they may, if you're lucky, last a couple of months. Instead, check out Craigslist, check out garage sales. People get rid of tools all the time for very cheap and more often than not, they're gonna be way better tools than you can find at a Dollar Tree or some other discount store. Number 14 is to collect and save rainwater. Now there are certain states that it's illegal. I don't understand that. But if you're in a state where it's not, um, you can find ways that are relatively inexpensive or free to save rainwater. You don't have to buy huge cisterns. You don't have to buy, you know, perfect professional rain barrels, an old trash can, uh, storage bins, anything you can think of that will catch the rain coming off the roof is going to be just fine. So see what you've got laying around. If it's going to rain, place them in a proper location to collect the most. And there you go, you've got water to use when rain isn't so plentiful. Okay, now I said number 15 was going to be something that I think you should spend your money on. If you're gonna spend any money at all, it needs to be on number 15. Other than make sure you have quality soil and the addition of compost is gonna do that. That's the most important thing that you can possibly do for your plants. Number 15 is where I think you should spend some money because number 15, you can't get free and you can't get it cheap. It's not a lot but that would be drip irrigation. Now, let me tell you why. If you live in a place where it rains all the time and you don't hard, hardly have to water, okay, then great, you can save even more money. But if you're in a place like me that has a dry climate and you're having to use the hose all the time, you're wasting water. Number one, you're wasting water. Number two, you are wasting a lot of time. But I will tell you, drip irrigation, and I have several videos on it, just I'll put links below, but you can search next level, drip irrigation, um, it is not hard. It is so easy to do. And I, I'm telling you, you will save, wh whatever you invest in your drip system, you will probably save that much in your first year. And if you don't, if you put it on a timer and you don't have to remember, then that is gonna keep it automated, which is gonna save you time, but it's also gonna keep your plants well watered the way they like, and they're gonna give you even more produce which is gonna save you money at the grocery store. All right, there it is, 15 tips to help save money while gardening. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. If you have something you can tell us and teach us and add, please put it in the comments below. Um, make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Share this video and I'll see you next time.